guys. Um, so on this episode of Seize the Day, I think we're going to take a little trip back into time. Um, I've been thinking a lot uh, about the letters that I've been getting from a lot of you that are fans of Beetlejuice talking about being in high school and doing theater or middle school um, and how much it's impacted your life and um, being that Beetlejuice is all about the strange and unusual. When you're a theater kid in high school, uh, a lot of times that's how you feel. You're definitely part of a, a special tribe. Um, and I've been loving listening to reading all of your letters. So I figured I would um, take you back in time to where I grew up in my high school. I actually live <laughs> about 10 minutes from where I grew up. I moved back out here to New Jersey. I live in South Orange, New Jersey, but I grew up in Livingston, New Jersey. So we're driving there right now. <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit about where this all started. And uh, we'll just, we'll do that today. You ready? Let's go. This is perfect. All right, here we are. This is Livingston High School. It's a library. I spent many, many, many summers in this library between the library and the town pool reading books and walking to the pool. A lot of tears in this high school. A lot of tears. A lot of bad fashion. So this is my high school. It's kind of weird sitting on these steps because in a couple of weeks, like, kids are coming to school here and they're going to be a freshman or a senior, I remember, driving up here, getting dropped off. So crazy. And that is the auditorium and those doors we used to go through uh, to get to rehearsal. So it was senior year of high school, 1995. It was the big, big year. I was finally a senior. I hadn't gotten like leads in high school. So it was finally we're doing West Side Story, one of my favorite musicals, I'm so excited. Um, I'm like, this is it, I'm, I'm finally, and I was a soprano one, I wasn't really belting that. So I was like, this is it, I'm totally soprano, I'm gonna be totally Maria. Big day happened, I walked through these doors, go into that auditorium, and I auditioned, and you had to like write little cards, like what role are you auditioning for? And I put Maria, would you be considered for any other roles? And I put no. Now, if you know West Side Story, one of the best parts in West Side Story is Anita. Now, personality-wise, I'm more of an Anita than Maria. I know that now. But back then, I was, I wanted to be the lead ingenue. And so I auditioned, I sang it flawless, and then the chorus teacher, Mrs. Spiro, said to me, Leslie, you know, would you like to audition for Anita? We think you'd be a really great Anita. And I was like, no. And they're like, are you sure? And I said, no, I, I'm sure. I don't want to be Anita, I want to be Maria. After the auditions, they did not cast me. And they had said to me, well, we would have cast you as Anita. And I said, no, I don't want to be Anita. I only want to be Maria. I wasn't in the senior year musical, my favorite musical of all time, which I probably will never do at this point in my life because I was headstrong about what I envisioned at 17 years old. So the moral of that story is, if you get to play another part in a show, and it's a really good part, don't turn it down when you're 17. Oh, and the other part of the story, so I go home, my mom's Puerto Rican, and I go home and I tell my mom, I'm so upset, and she calls the principal, and she's like, Mr. Grady, I understand that my daughter was offered the role of Anita, but she wants to play Maria, it's her senior year, and I just want to ask you, maybe if she's not Puerto Rican enough to play Maria, but she's Puerto Rican enough to play Anita? I don't understand that. We have a problem. And the, the principal is like, well, I'm sorry, you know, Ms. Kritzer, uh, you know, we, we did our best. We wanted to, you know, offer the role of Anita. Meanwhile, like, when is the principal an agent at the high school for musicals? Like, my mother is being my agent or my manager advocating me for a role. But this is what? mothers do. It didn't make a difference. My parents still got divorced. But she tried to use that as a little thing. She's like, you know, her father and I got divorced. It's been a very hard year for her. Didn't work. Because everybody's parents are getting divorced. 
So, you know, during this time of senior year, it was really tough. My parents were getting divorced. I make light of it now, but it was very difficult. Theater was a place where I could go and be myself and be with a group of people who all felt like they were different, who all were going through things, but we created beautiful stuff together. Even though my senior year, I acted like a jerk um, because I felt like I was owed something. I got to do plays, I got to build sets, I got to be with people that became my lifelong friends and I found my tribe. Theater was the place where I felt like home. Um, and I, that's where I belonged. And uh, that's where I still belong. So when you guys write me letters and you're saying, you know, you're going through tough times and that Beetlejuice makes you happy and theater makes you happy and I understand that and I relate to that. It's a very, very special thing to be a part of. So if you're out there and you're feeling that you're struggling or you're going through something um, you're not alone. You're definitely not alone. So that's the 7-Eleven. We used to hang out there in the parking lot. My parents did not like that. The Antonio's has been here since I was in high school. I got uh, my first perm there. First spiral perm ever. Yes, I had a head full of curly, cheesy hair. Oh my God, that's where the Weight Watchers used to be. Yes, I used to go to Weight Watchers in high school. Oh, it's still there. Um, of course it's still there, of course. So this is the Ritz Diner where I would hang out in high school. Everyone would come here at night. It's still here. And <laughs> we would all just like hang out in the parking lot, eat at the Ritz Diner, disco fries, fries with gravy. Oh my God. The payphone is still here. This is nuts. This is gonna be vintage to all of you guys. Okay. So this used to be, both of these used to be payphones. For all of you guys that don't know payphones, we'd have to put a quarter in the phone to call our parents. So many, many nights I would come in here and call my parents to pick me up. But this is still the same. We'd all just hang out here after whatever, after our, our show, we'd come and then pay and pay. So I wanted to, um, show you my house like just like my street and this lady is like parked in her house which is my old house and I don't want to oh she's pulling out but there's like a lot of memories on this street and actually my house is over there you see she's pulling out of my driveway this is so stalkery and weird it feels strange you know after all of these years knowing that in that house is where like all the Broadway dreams started you know like listening to my CDs and acting out plays and skits and like that's kind of where it all began. I'll be there for you. These my words I swear to you. When you breathe, I wanna be there for you. So Calvin and Calvin, tell us how you met these two fans. So the, we go way, way back to the SpongeBob musical, okay. um, and they're incredible. They're amazing. In fact, Hannah won the contest that I had earlier, which is Otho presents. But they're here. But they're here. Here they are, Hello. and they're dressed as Delia and Charles. Can you even? Yes. And show, so show now that I'm going to so show the artwork that you made for for Calvin and this, for us. So this yeah. is songs for another world to be released at some point. <laughs> it's a, it's supposed to be a parody of Songs for a New World by uh, Jason Robert Brown. And then Calvin, show oh what gosh, they... this is my old costume and my new costume and also it's a throwback to Sideshow the Half Men, Half Woman. <laughs> They're everything. See. All right guys, say hi Broadway.com. Hi Broadway.com. Broadway right. Thank you guys. You're so awesome and creative. We love our fans. <laughs> so You're amazing. Awesome. Seize the day! Leslie Kritzer and Presley Ryan. Now today on Ask Presley, Presley is going to show us what? How to host the most epic snob ever. And now what's a snob? Saturday night on Broadway, every week a different cast member will bring a different drink or a snack and we all enjoy it after the, the show on Saturday. For the entire cast and some of the crew and also a lot of Broadway theaters do this. Almost all of them do this Saturday night on Broadway. It's sort of a tradition. It's something to kind of celebrate the end of the week and you sign up for it. So this week, Presley is doing. You want to show them the invitation? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Her theme Sundays this week is on Saturday. So we're making an ice cream sundae bar. Here, show. I put it right up to the camera. First step: 
make an invitation and hang them up all over the theater. She like, she, you really like turned it. I worked hard on these, yeah. We I mean, ordered them on this. Etsy, then we print, we printed cardstock and we pasted them on these. What's the next step? We are having, order your ice cream. We ordered from Tipsy Scoop, which is an alcoholic ice cream place, and we had toppings, right and dots. we have normal ice cream, we have vegan and normal and regular. Okay, and then? Step two, order cute and trendy cups and spoons. <laughs> And cute napkins. Great. We're really very cute. excited. Here we go. It's going to be a very fun Saturday night on Broadway. Yeah. At Beetlejuice. Presley. Incredible. This is Snob. We have vodka. Um, alcoholic ice cream sandwiches. Not for you, but for everyone else. Ice cream. Tipsy ice cream. <laughs> Literally. Literally tipsy. Oh my God. Uh, so tipsy. Oh my God. So tipsy. Oh my God. Look I want a amazing. Sandwich. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. 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 I'm so excited. Oh, oh, oh my god, this is Oh my god, this is Everyone is knitted. Everyone is knitted in the hallway. Steph is knitted. What are you knitting in the hallway? A sock. It's a sock in the hallway. She's knitting a sock in the hallway. Everyone is knitting in the hallway. Oh. Everyone is knitting. Everyone is knitting in the hallway. In the hallway. If Beth is knitting, what are you knitting in the hallway? In the hallway. Is it a hat? It's a tiny hat. It's a tiny hat in the hallway. Everyone is knitting. Yeah. Everyone knitting in the hallway. In the hallway. Saturday night on Broadway. Oh, here comes Dad to yell at us. Oh. <laughs> This episode is for all of you theater kids out there dreaming of being on Broadway, dreaming of doing this with your lives, whatever creative part of it is. Dance, acting, being an artist of some sort. Whatever makes you feel safe and good in a place that you can use your creativity. I always wanted to be here and now I got here. Now I'm here and I did it. We do it for you guys. So we love you all. And um, that's all for this week. Yeah.